Hey guys, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and today I want to talk to you about my Synology and show you how I've got it set up. Alright, so before we get started here, I actually want to preface this video with a bit of a disclaimer here. Uh, I am not the foremost expert when it comes to the Synology and how they're set up. I'm definitely not the person you should be going to if you have advanced level questions. Uh, let's just say I know enough to be dangerous, but I definitely don't know a lot when it comes to these. I know enough that I need for my uses here uh, because this is a very complicated system. Yeah, I obviously just use it for very simple purposes, but the Synologies serve a wide variety of industries uh, and therefore they do have a lot of complex things but I only use it for a very small number of things and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's get started here and actually talk about the model here that I have. And this is the DS1813 Plus. It is an 8-bay NAS server and I'll talk about NAS in a second. But uh, in terms of this it product itself, um, I like to think of it and equate it to like the prosumer level of cameras. Uh, this definitely isn't the cheapest uh, Synology you can get, uh, but they also go crazy expensive and crazy huge and really complicated. Um, so I really do think this is a, a really good starting point if you're going to be serious about your backup solutions, because that's why people look at the Synologies are really good backup solutions and backup programs. So let's actually talk about the whole NAS aspect of it because some people do wonder what's the difference between you know getting something like a Synology NAS uh, RAID server system thing for your backups as opposed to something like just RAID drives, something like GTEC or something like that that are used to backup. And the difference obviously is the NAS, the network attached storage aspect of it. And what that means is it, it's accessible on any network as long as you can connect to it. Now you can see this cable here. Uh, this is actually an ethernet cable plugged into the back of my Synology and it's going to my Apple time capsule. What that basically does, uh, a couple of things, it also helps me access this drive anywhere in the world. So I can be on the other side of the world and I can log into this and actually have access to all my files. Uh, and that is a big plus. That's a lot of the reason why many people jump over and use Synology because their files are everywhere, no matter where they go. So they don't have to log it with them because I don't know if you can tell, this is a pretty big box. And when you put a whole bunch of hard drives in it, it gets really heavy. You don't want to be logging this around with you. So that is a great benefit. It's having it attached to a network. You can access all your files wherever you are in the world. But I also uh, oftentimes are either sitting on my bed here or at my desk and I don't actually have to be plugged directly into it to access all my information. I could be on the couch and I can still have access to all my information without being plugged directly in. Uh, and that is a really cool feature for me. That is a, a main reason why I actually bought it. Uh, and actually, let's talk about how I use this because I actually use it for two different purposes uh, and that whole network, um, being able to access it wherever I am, especially in the house, is going to be a part of it because I use this for two purposes, as I said. Uh, I use it as a media server for all my movies, TV shows, and music, and all that kind of stuff. And I also use it to back up all my pictures and stuff like that. Uh, and that's actually what I have here on two separate drives. Uh, and I want to just talk about these here because this is actually my media drives, my two three terabyte drives, and then here are my photos in RAID 1. I have a whole RAID system and a clone system and I will talk about that later on. Uh, and my photos is a two terabytes, uh, two two terabyte drives, and then again I have a three terabyte clone for my media and a two terabyte clone for my photos. I'll talk about all that later on. But um, some people do wonder when they're first looking at this stuff is what size do I need to get? Because I remember when I was first looking at getting a Synology, I only ever needed or thought I would ever need six bays because obviously I have my media, photos, and then my clones. But I decided to opt for two extra bays and that's a good thing I did because uh, when it's not a small investment in money, I'll be very honest about that. Um, you do end up paying a fair chunk of money, but it's also an investment. You're investing in a backup strategy. Uh, and one thing you do have to think about when it comes to that is future proofing your stuff. And also um, the whole analogy that I've, uh, I tell, tell people sometimes when I'm talking about, you know, what size do they need for their Synology is I call it the laptop analogy is a, uh, We've all had it, you first get a brand new laptop and it's got a nice big hard drive in it and you go, wow, I am i don't know how I'm gonna fill up this space. Uh, it's so much memory, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it all. 
and then you play around with it and then 12 months later you've got two external drives full of stuff your laptop is full and it's slow because it's absolutely full of memory and that's why i kind of went with a bigger 8 base system because this is already 12 months from now and I actually have two four terabyte drives on order to put in these two empty slots here because of all the video content I've been producing. It's actually filling up all my media drives and I want that space back. So I'm glad I actually opted for an eight base system even when I didn't need it at the time because 12 months later, I'm already looking like I need to expand it out. So that's why I've picked out that. But the main reason people do this is for backup strategies and I want to also talk about hard drives themselves and why I have rates and clones and things like that and <clears throat> excuse me I have a bit of an example here hard drives uh, these are two hard drives that I actually picked out of my gaming computer over there and it's a great reason to have something like this hard drives especially these mechanical hard drives will always fail no matter no matter what it's not a matter of if it's when and of course having all your images on one hard drive and then it failing and dying you've lost all your stuff deal with it it's a problem uh, sometimes you can get it back for the most part but sometimes you've just lost all your information and that's really bad especially if you want to take this professionally or if you are a professional photographer you want to make sure you have backups of everything and that is why or where these really do come into play because they have great backup strategy capabilities here. Uh, and I wanna explain here, because I mentioned that I have a whole RAID and clone setup, and I wanna talk about my RAID setup to begin with. Uh, I won't go into what RAID is, it is quite complicated. Uh, there are tons of great videos here on YouTube that explain what RAID is. Uh, they'll be able to explain it a lot better than what I can do, but I, I can explain what, how I use RAID, and specifically RAID 1. There are various types of RAID systems, what RAID is, is basically joining a whole bunch of hard drives together to create mirror backup solutions very easily in case a hard drive does fail. So what is RAID 1? RAID 1 is two hard drives that act as one and the information is shared between them and it's mirrored. Now why would you do that? Now if you, again, if you have all your information on one hard drive and it fails, you've lost it. But with RAID, it's spread and linked between the two drives. So say if one fails, say this one here fails, you still have all your information on this one and it's still accessible to a point. But then what you do is you get another hard drive of the same size, you put it in, a new hard drive, fresh, you can do that really easily with these guys. You just click it in, open it, pop your hard drive in there, slide it back in, and you're done. You put that in and it rebuilds the connection between these two drives and then they act as one. So that is a really great, very simple solution to have a, a solid backup strategy. It's a good starting point. But as I also mentioned, I have clone drives and these clones are the same size, you say for my media, it's a three terabyte drive, as I said before. And then my clone is also a three terabyte. And every week it looks at my, my RAID drives and says, is there anything new? Uh, has anything changed? And if so, it copies it over. But why would I have a clone? As I said before, hard drives will always fail. And sometimes when the uh, RAID system is rebuilding that connection, you know, say you've got a, an old hard drive here and you put a fresh new hard drive in here. Uh, and this happens more often when the hard drive, the original hard drive that was in there first is kind of old. When it's rebuilding that connection between the two drives, it's really taxing, especially on mechanical hard drives. It puts a lot of work involved because it's linking these two drives together. Uh, it's a very layman's term uh, way of describing it, but because it can be quite taxing, uh, sometimes the original hard drive does fail. Uh, you know, the one that had all the information on it and not the fresh one. And when that does happen, you've lost all your data, your RAID is gone. It doesn't happen often, but it happens often enough where people get a bit concerned. And that's why I have a clone. So say if all my RAID stuff does go, I still have a backup clone. And that is uh, really the start of this. You can do backups of backups. That's what my clone is. It's a backup of my backups. Uh, and that is a, a huge point to me. Um, 
But one thing that is also really great about these uh, Synologies is because of their network attached storage aspect. Uh, because it's connected to the internet, it can use internet-based services to do backing up. There's a whole bunch of stuff the Synology can do, uh, but backing up is one of them to the cloud. There are lots of services available. Uh, I use Amazon Glacier, uh, which is a backup service provided by Amazon. Uh, many people might have heard of a thing called Amazon S3, which is their simple storage solution that they have. Um, and it's basically online cloud backups. But with Glacier, it's uh, a little bit more, they kind of market it as cl uh, cold storage. And it's, you put all your information into the cloud and it's kind of a last resort thing. So say if my raid fails and then for some miraculous reason, my clone also fails at the same time, uh, it's unlikely, but you know, I've heard of worse things happening. Then you do have your cloud backup that you can pull down and then you still have all your information because at that point you have a backup of a backup of a backup. Uh, so uh, that's something you really need to think about when you're doing this kind of setup is you want uh, a full backup workflow uh, in case something does go wrong. Uh, and that pretty much covers what I do with my Synology. Um, actually, I have done a separate video talking about my entire backup workflow when it comes to editing my images. Uh, I actually have done a video and actually I'll put a little thumbnail link here for you to go check it out. Uh, and that is uh, basically a video on how I deal with my images when I'm working on them because it's kind of in two stages. It's when I'm working on an image and all the backups and kind of how that works. And then once an image is finished, it goes into what I call like second stage backup solutions. And that when that's when it gets put into this guy and then it goes to the backup raids and then the clones and then Amazon Glacier and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, so definitely something you should be thinking about if you want to take this seriously or if you are a professional photographer, you want to have a solid backup solution. Uh, and I do wholeheartedly recommend Synology because they have a great system in place. Uh, really solid service. I really do like this stuff. So hopefully you've actually learned something from this or you had, if you have any more questions, please throw them down in the comments below. Uh, hopefully I'll try my best to answer them. Again, I'm not the most technical person when it comes to these guys, but I know enough. So hopefully I'll be able to help you out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been Craig McCormick. I'll catch you in the next one.